wounds, we've all likely experienced at least one in our lifetime, whether it be from a burn, surgery, or in my case, it was a misguided attempt at roller skating. <laughs> but a chronic wound is one that fails to heal within a certain time span, this generally being around three months or so. Because it fails to heal, it's open, and it's more likely to be in contact with bacteria, which in turn leads to infection. Now, infection in chronic wounds is very dangerous because it can remain hidden until symptoms are more severe, and by this stage, it will require antibiotics, or in some cases, even amputation. In the UK alone, 20% of antibiotics are overprescribed by healthcare professionals. Two million people will be affected by chronic wounds, and this could include you. Despite this, the last FDA-approved chronic wound treatment was back in 1997. So why is this not a more pressing concern? My name is Sarah Cameron, and my research focuses on a smart bandage device that can detect infection in chronic wounds. Now, we have developed a sensor system that uses laser-induced graphene and vitamin B2, also known as riboflavin. Now, laser-induced graphene is simply when you shine a laser against a sheet of polyamide plastic and it burns it but it leaves behind this conductive material that has a high surface area and it's easy to make. It can literally be made within minutes at a low cost, which is important when you consider the NHS budget. We then add riboflavin by placing the laser and juice graphene in a solution of riboflavin and leaving it for 30 minutes. But why do we do this? Well, when we apply a voltage to the laser and juice graphene, the riboflavin produces a peak in the current that shifts as the pH increases. So we can monitor wound pH. Now, wound pH regulates at around 4 to 6.5, staying within a more acidic range so that it can heal. However, if bacteria enters the wound, they try to make it more alkaline so they can multiply and survive. One study showed by applying acidic ointments, bacteria loads were reduced, even in antibiotic-resistant ones. This means if we can monitor wound pH, we can monitor early signs of infection and ongoing wound treatment options. Now, for the first time, we have tested this in simulated wound fluid, human blood and human plasma, and it still produces a distinguishable peak, so it can be used in a wound environment. We were also able to replicate these results with six different sensors, the standard being three, and it showed minimal difference between measurements, proving this is a reproducible and precise method. Going forward, this could mean there are advances in wound care, in the patient's quality of life, and a reduction in antibiotic-resistant bacteria. So to chronic wounds, I think it's time we say, let's be flavin' you!